Infinite banking is one of the most controversial topics I think out there in the world of insurance. And the reason for that, I believe, is because we have agents all over there on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram shorts making all these videos where it's like, hey, anyone can do this. It's super easy. There's nothing that can go wrong. It's a super tried and true formula. And here's the thing. There's a ton of strings attached to this type of strategy. I made another lengthy video on my channel where I gave my opinions on infinite banking. However, today I'm going to sit down with Chris Kirkpatrick from Life 180, who runs his own YouTube channel with, I think, over 20,000 subscribers or something like that. He does an excellent job at breaking down exactly how infinite banking works. He is residing in the States, not in Canada. So the tax laws are a little bit different. But we sat down today. We had an awesome conversation where we went back and forth on the merits of infinite banking, the things that can go really right with it, and also some of the problems that we see in the industry with advisors making these TikToks and YouTube shorts and how they're structured in their policy which just can be very detrimental and there are structure in them wrong, pardon me. And so, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and you get a little bit of information about infinite banking and the pros and cons of it. And by the end of it, hopefully you have a good understanding of whether or not it's right for you. What is up, guys? For those of you new to the channel, my name is Philip Setter. I'm the founder and CEO of Finavia Life, where we've helped hundreds of Canadians find the right life insurance coverage at the right price, all from the comfort of their own home. So if that sounds interesting to you, I'll put a link in the description. You can check it out. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. Chris, thank you so much for uh, for doing this with me. So yeah, basically, I didn't even tell him yeah, what right. we're going to be doing this on. All I want to do is I just want to have a candid conversation about infinite banking as a whole. Right. Um, Chris runs a YouTube channel, Life 180, where he basically focuses, I think, 90 or 100% on infinite banking and kind of the different ways it's structured. Is that fair to say, more or less? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say um, I use the term infinite banking because of the fact that it's got a lot of marketing play uh, yeah. at this point in time. Um, I, I'm a very big, strong believer in uh, properly designed whole life insurance. Yep. Um, you know, the different roles that it plays in people's lives. Uh, I, I like to help people. We do a lot of real estate investing. We do uh, utilizing whole life insurance as a foundational asset. I would say if I had to focus my channel, <laughs> it's more on financial structure. Um, in people's lives and helping yep. people like design their life for predictable success instead of like riding the roller coaster of the stock market, so to speak. Right. Okay. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And so you do, you do a great job. I mean, I just checked your channel and I mentioned this before we hit record, but like, I think you have 970 or 960 videos out on the channel. So you put out content. Um, and I've seen, I, I maybe have watched, 20 of your videos or 15 of your videos which now yeah. i realize is like only a fraction of what you put out there <laughs> um, awesome. like you're putting you're putting a video out a day which is just it's insane and you know i applaud it but i mean nice. okay so what i want to talk about today i guess so you're down in the states i'm here in canada so you know the tax laws are a little bit different the products are mm -hmm. a little different the insurance is a little bit different some yeah. of the things though on my channel i really focus on like okay how can we make better financial decisions for canadians you know how can we mm -hmm. pick insurance products and more often than not i recommend term life insurance is usually the best option for the majority of canadians and so okay. i look at at term versus permanent and i see what's kind of happening out there in the marketplace and you've probably seen it as well you've seen on TikTok and facebook and instagram and you have all these things like well the secrets of the rich and you know learn what waka flock is doing and what this rich basketball player is doing or nba player is doing and i kind of look at all this marketing and i'm like okay you know what the heck is this right and so i did make a video on infinite banking and i've read uh, uh nelson nash's book the infinite mm -hmm. banking book and you know I, I read through it all and it seems like a lot of marketing material and i kind of broke it down to like this is just a leverage strategy just like any other leverage strategy right but maybe sure. in in your words maybe you could describe what you consider infinite banking yeah so so okay so i let's let's look at it this way um everybody's financial lives goes through different stages fair enough yeah right so when sure. we start yep. off you know we start off our, our lives and what do we have to do we have to think about like all right it's no different than building a house right like we need to build our financial house yep and so when we look at that like you build a house what do you do first you build the foundation and then you build all the good stuff that all the stuff that people see that can be beautiful and fancy and awesome and amazing on top of the foundation but if you build all that fancy stuff on top of a poor foundation you know it, it's it's always susceptible to risk right yep. it's always got the potential that you know one bad storm or rainstorm could have a flood go through without a good foundation all gets washed out you know a bad you know bad environment <laughs> happens and everything falls over and so 
that's that's kind of you know the way that I look at the reason that North Americans specifically, uh, Canadians and Americans have have this massive problem is that it's not that they don't invest enough. It's not that they don't um, you know just invest or save in general. It's that yeah. they do things in the wrong order. They're focused on the wrong things. And okay. You know, so my focus uh, with this and how I would kind of dictate to answer your question directly with what is infinite banking? Well, infinite banking is simply a marketing term. Like, that's it. The yep. problem with infinite banking is it's wildly misrepresented by a lot of people. It's sensationalized. Um, and unfortunately, most people are not ready to implement infinite banking um, because you've got to hit a certain stage before you can actually effectively implement a lot of the strategies that are taught and coached, right? And so, I love the theories and the concepts and like in a vacuum and a bubble, like they work. The problem is I always kind of tell people life doesn't exist on a spreadsheet. Life exists, right? Yes. And on a spreadsheet, I could show you how, how, how infinite banking can work. Right. And now even that, I would say a lot of the like TikToks and Instagrams and YouTube videos are kind of misrepresenting what it really is. And we'll get into that. I'm sure. sure. But, but from this perspective, I look at it like this, we need to, we need I, one of my favorite things, and I don't like the guy, but I'm just going to say it. Maybe you like him. I don't know. But Grant Cardone. Yeah. No, don't know. worry. We're on, we're on the same page. Okay. I, I also I don't like very him. much dislike him. Okay. Very good. So we're. I know don't worry. I like yeah. Him. We're on the same so, page. Okay. So I don't like Grant Cardone, but he <laughs> says one thing and he says it all the time that I actually really like. He says, you need to save before you invest, but you need to save with the intent of investing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yep. Fair well, I use that on my channel all the time, and I don't often admit I stole it from Grant Cardone. Yeah, that's okay. Um, Take you it. know, and that's okay, right? Like we all, you know, nothing is original in this world, right? So um, he stole it from someone else. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. And so that's why I don't feel bad. But the um, but the idea is like most of the people. What what is the problem? And I, I promise you, I'm going to answer your question. Here. No, no, you keep going. It's okay. like, all good. What what's the problem? In the biggest problem in the world when it comes to personal finance, I think, especially with America and uh, the North America, Canadi Canadians and <laughs> Americans, is we're taught to go to school, get a job, invest in a 401k, invest in an RISP or whatever you guys have up there, right? Yeah. Did I get RSP. that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. RSP. Uh, yeah. Registered okay. Retirement Savings Fund. Okay. RSP. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, like to be, we're taught the younger you are, the more risk you can take. Fair yep. enough. Yep. And so it's the idea is the younger you are, the more risk you can take. So go chase those big returns. <clears throat> invest fast. Invest soon. Right. Like invest as quickly as possible. Because if you start investing young, you can't lose. Right. Like you're going to be way yeah. ahead of the curve. Compounds over yeah. time. You know, yeah, blended but, return. Lose some. Win some. Etc. Yeah. But like the bottom line is, I'm I come from the school of thought: the younger you are, the less risk you have to take. Okay. Right. And, and here's the thing is that you're not really an investor. Like if you go talk to Warren Buffett and I, and like, I don't like to use big names, but like, you know, Warren Buffett says this very, very cleanly in a lot of his talks and his coaching, if you go deep into his stuff is, you know, he, he basically is a huge proponent of having a good stable financial foundation. Like a lot of people like to compare and say, well, I need to invest in this stuff because Warren Buffett is doing this, right? It's yeah. like, I got yeah. news for you. You're not Warren Buffett. Yeah. You don't you don't have Warren Buffett's financial structure to go invest and do things the way that he's doing them, right? Yeah. And and if you go out and if you don't say do what Grant Cardone says and save mm -hmm. first but save with the intent of investing, if you don't have that financial foundation of your financial house, if you don't have that solid, <clears throat> then all the investments and risky things and fancy things that you put on top of the foundation are always going to be at risk, right? And if we know this, the market is cyclical, right? And it's it's human behavior, right? Like I said, on a spreadsheet, I could show you how the younger you are, the more risk you could take. You could go out, you could invest in your 20s and all that stuff. And it's great. You know, like it'll look really good on a spreadsheet. That's not that's not life, you mm -hmm. know. And so we're not if robots. You're, if you're 25 yeah. and you get out of school and you got your first job and you're investing, and let's say you invest, let's say you got out and and you got out in 2013 you know, and you got through your first decade or maybe your first seven years and, and, uh, you felt like everything was going really well. Right. And you were saving, you were doing your, let's say you were saving 20% and yep. you were not even saving, you were <laughs> investing 20% in your, 
in your investment accounts between 401k sure. or RSPs and brokerage accounts and all these things. And you know, you were and you were killing it because the market, greatest bull run of all time, right? You're killing it. Yep. But let's say you were that's where all your money was going, was going into high risk growth stocks, like whatever that people are doing. Cause the younger you are, the more risk you take. Might as well take some big swings, right? Sure. Yep. Then 2020 comes along, <clears throat> right? And yep. COVID happens and the world yep. shuts down. You lose your job. Yep. And now you didn't have any emergency savings, right? Because now, because what happens is people don't think about saving, they think about investing. And people have been wildly miseducated about the not understanding there's a difference between saving and investing. Yep. Right. And it's just a function of risk. In savings, you can't lose money. In investing, you can't. Right. Sure. Yep. And so, and so now they, they've invested, but they haven't really saved. And that's the problem is people like, they look at their 401k or RSP, they look at, you know, their brokerage accounts and they go, Oh, I got money. I'm good. You know, yep. but they don't have any safe money as an mm. emergency fund. Yeah. I see what you're saying for you know sure. Saying? Yeah. So Non-correlated market happens. asset. Right. So now yep. 2020 happens. Yeah. What happens? They lose their job. Yep. What happened to the stock market? It went down 40%. Yep. All at the same time they lost their job and they don't have an emergency fund. So what do yep. they have to do? Yep. Take a loan. Get some funding elsewhere or pull their pull liquidate, their investments out, liquidate their investments out liquidate of loss. negatively performing assets, you know. And then yeah. what, what happens? You got seven or eight years of feeling like they're on top of the world. They started at 25, now they're 33 years old, right? And there's a good chance during that time they had to liquidate a lot of their assets and they're starting at zero again. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question though for that. And and keep in mind, I work a lot more just on the insurance front and not financial yeah. planning or investments. Sure. Um, but like, wouldn't an emergency fund work quite well in that scenario if you just allocated a portion, you know, let's say six months to 12 months. I mean, that's what a lot of CFPs, a lot of financial planners recommend, for allocating sure. some type of emergency fund. So if that did happen, you wouldn't need to liquidate any of your assets um, and you could keep sure. them in the market. For sure. Well, you could, but so here's the deal. So when I talk about uh, an emergency fund, I love utilizing whole life insurance as an emergency fund. Okay. Because, yep. And that's it because I could show you how, and it's a little different. This is what I will do the caveat with. It's a little sure. different in Canada than it is the U S <laughs> because you guys don't have the ability to get quite as much liquidity early in the policy as we do. Yeah, it's it's definitely I mean, it depends how you structure it as well. Right. I mean, basically, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, I don't know how it is in the States, but in Canada, you basically have two ends of the spectrum on this mm -hmm. end right here is like high death benefit, medium cash surrender value. OK. Right. And on this uh, spectrum over here, it's like lower death benefit, but maximum cash surrender value and you do what's this with, maximum, you know, what's when you say maximum what you what can, is it you can you can probably break even in like three years if you want yeah with with sure. paid up additions and edo um especially if you do like a like a term life insurance rider you can increase what's yeah. known as the i don't is the mtar do you have, is mtar down there the same thing it is, is here we have mech mech okay and, yeah. and for Modified those who don't know what that is that's basically um, the limit that you're allowed to accrue within your life insurance policy tax for your tax exempt yeah before say. you hit the tax yeah you lose the tax benefits if you cross the yeah. boundary yeah. yeah so there's some ways that we can artificially bump up that limit so mm -hmm. yeah we can still break free in the early years you're you're definitely not wrong with that um, i made another video on my channel where i basically compared whole life insurance as an investment to an rsp and i mean if you look at the numbers you know this is just a standard whole life you know i didn't pump anything mm -hmm. extra into it right sure. if you look at the numbers from a pure um, withdrawal during retirement and then net death benefit, and yeah. you compare it at different tax, um, effective tax rates, yeah. you'll see that numbers are actually um, quite similar. Actually, the RSP comes out ahead. And so yeah. one of the things that I said on the channel that you need to consider is like, and, and you made up some great points about the RSP. I, I should should note that. But one of the things that you need to consider when you talk about like an invest in life insurance strategy or infant banking is all the other variables that come with it. Like you talk that we're not, you know, robots. And I think that also applies to whole life insurance, right? Like totally. if you can't afford a premium, let's say one year, and I know we can structure it in a way. So I guess this is a good question to, to maybe yeah. ask here. Do you structure all of your, um, you, I, I don't want to call it infinite banking. Well, let's just say all of your strategies, all your yeah, policies yeah, yeah. that you do with your clients, are you structuring it from that point where it's like, let's get maximum safety and let's have it so you break even almost right away just in case something happens? 
So it depends on the individual. So sure. I always kind of tell people there's no right way to build a policy. The right way to build a policy is to have it be the most in alignment with your goals and objectives, right? Yeah. Like, and so what I believe, because my fo my main focus is financial. Sorry, I'm going to turn this ringer off. My yeah, no my, my main focus, my main focus is financial structure, right? And I will say this: my belief is a properly designed whole life insurance policy should be the foundational asset in every single person's life because it's the only financial tool in the world that'll perform multiple duties for you, right? Like it'll okay. like because the. Like, think about it this way. I just did a video on this about how whole life will help you through every phase of your life, right? And they're okay. all things that we need to deal with all the time, right? Like, like one hundred percent of people will need to deal with these problems. And we think about it if we and if we think about like, let's take the journey really quickly of the life of a human being, right? Like, we yeah. go to school, we get out, and we get our first job, right? And we get our first job, and what do we need? We 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 think, well, we need to start saving money. And I would argue, I'll, I'll tell you what I would say is the best way to do it, not what everybody's doing, is we need to start saving money, saving with the intent of investing, right? Yeah. We do not want to start investing right away. We want to build our foundation first. Okay. So that's why I like whole life, and that's why for a person like that, I would start to design it for that safety. And in doing so, what I'll tell you is I would build it with the flexibility. So let's say. Somebody at a at a school had a, a you know a fifty thousand dollar a year job. Uh, maybe they're living at home, or maybe their their overhead is low, or whatever. You know, start start like a five hundred dollar a month saving plan. Really? Or, yeah, hundred percent. In in whole life, five hundred dollars yeah. a month in whole yep. life. Yep. And here here hear me out. You're, okay. I, okay. Okay. I, you, because sure. and this is gonna be fun because you're probably gonna be like, whoa, Chris, I don't agree with this, and that's cool. <laughs> I love that. I no, love that's good. Fun. That that's what makes this conversation interesting, right? Because totally. if I'm just if you're 100%. sitting here blindly agreeing with me or I'm blindly agreeing with you, totally. I mean, it's not going to be that interesting. 100%. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And so, and I would say this, and here's why. Okay. Because I, I always kind of say, don't try to solve long-term problems with a short-term mindset. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, at, and so this is one of those things. Now, will I say do this for every 25-year-old? No. But okay. I, if, let's say you're a 25-year-old, right? Yeah. I'm going to have a conversation with you. I'm going to say, Phil, what are your goals in life? Do you want to get married? Well, we're doing this hypothetically or hypothetically. <laughs> uh, you, sure. What's Just the right answer? Yes yeah, yeah, for yes, sure. Yes, yes, Chris, I'd love to get married. <laughs> um, so, so, you know. Yeah, I want um, it all. I want marriage, kids, marriage, house, kids, anything right? else that you want me to say. <laughs> all this stuff, right? Like, you want to get married. You want to have kids. Like, the, yep. the typical, like, life. You know, yeah, the, the Canadian dream. Yep, yeah, the igloo, the the igloo house for want. sure. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So yeah. let's start with there. Right. So like, we know that you want to get married. We know you want to have kids. All right. So we know that you're never going to be healthier than you are right now. First of all, we know yeah. that you need to save money. Fair enough. Yeah. You want to save a, a good financial foundation as we've been talking about so far. They yeah. may not feel this yet, but I got to get them to see that that's an important component. The saving part, the sure. rest of it, they get, <laughs> I get, I got to build the savings in. So now what's on my role and my team's role when we're helping them design the life insurance policy is to not put them at risk where it's like 500 bucks a month required, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we, yeah. Can build it, we can build it so they are required to pay maybe 150 bucks a month. Okay, yep. And they can do up to 500. Yep, right? Yep. We, we can do something similar in Canada okay. as well. So now what we're talking about is out of that 500 bucks a month, that's $6,000 a year. So let's talk annually for a second, just to keep numbers simple. Okay. That's 6,000 bucks a year. I could show you that, you cannot compare, and I'm going to challenge you to this because sure. the way you describe you cannot compare whole life to an investment because it's not investment. It doesn't have the same risk profile as an investment. Okay. You have to compare whole life to a savings account. Okay. Because okay. that's the competitive nature of it. You know, and, and I would argue, especially now with the well, I see, with all I the see what you're failure, saying. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there. I, I see what you're saying, you know, just talking you mentioned that a whole life is applicable for a multitude of different goals, right? Mm -hmm. Or a multitude of different life stages. So, mm -hmm. you know, in that sense, you are correct. I suppose if you try to compare it like a whole life, you can use for so many different things, which is, mm -hmm. which is right. Whereas if you compared it to an investment that has a strict purpose. However, I think you still can compare it apples to apples. If your pure investment is going to be used 
as an investment. And so you had some type of, you had an additional savings account, you had an emergency fund account, you had these other mechanisms, you had maybe a house that you could get a HELOC off of if you needed to and pull that and, and live off that if you lost your job. Does that make sense? You understand what I'm saying? So I, I mean, think you could still compare it apples to apples, but I, I understand what you are saying about the multitude of different options that you can use. But I, would, for. I would just say, do you, do you like efficiency? <laughs> <laughs> You've done these leading questions before. You're, you're bringing me down the path. <laughs> no, I hate efficiency. You do? Okay. Well, then we probably end this call. I got the, you. Um, the, um, so here's the deal. Like, sure. Think about it this way. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you believe it's, it's prudent financial advice for a Canadian or American to have, uh, say, six months in liquid guaranteed uh, like a bank account a cd oh yeah okay yeah 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 something. absolutely so you think that's prudent prudent advice to have that yeah absolutely okay so when we so let's not talk about all the investments of the world because sure. you're trying you're trying to like sure. blend all these things together sure block those out yeah because it's not the same thing sure whole life is only comparable yeah to a cd to a savings account, to a bond, to other assets that have the same risk profile. Sure. Yeah. I, I, in in inside the par fund, I, I the fund inside the whole life insurance sure. uh, uh, contract. But sure. apples to apples. Now let's take this a step further. <laughs> but I, but but I don't know if you could then directly compare whole life to a CD to the savings account because there's there's way more additional complexities that arise from a whole life. And and keep in mind, I think I still think it's a good idea. Sure. For people, right? But sure. you have to admit that there are additional complexities that are involved. There's the you still need to pay the interest rate on your loan. You still need to, you know, worry about dividend scale. Okay. okay. You yep. still need sure. to worry about premium payments. Yes. So there are yes. there's still there's added variables to it. And I totally. listen, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's a good product, right? I, but but I, I don't think saying. if you're saying that you're gonna compare that to CDs and that's a fair comparison, but I can't compare it to an investment because of the other variables. Listen, I'm not I'm not going to dispute that. And so <laughs> yeah. I and and my answer would be like what are your values and beliefs? Like what yeah. are your goals? What are your objectives, right? Sure. And if that's the case, like now we have to look at this. I would also say there's a lot more benefits that come along with whole life than those accounts, right? Okay. Because you know, it, and and there, listen, there's no free lunches in this world. Like every everything that comes with a benefit is going to have a cost associated with that benefit. Like Yep. That's how it works. Yep. Right. And so, and so when I look at this, like, can I compare it to a CD? I can and I can't, right? Like I can yeah. because like when we look at the returns, yeah. Um a, a whole life policy is going to over a 10 year period compete with a CD. Okay. It'll be a little behind on the front end, <clears throat> and it'll be a little ahead on the back end of the 10 year mark, right? And so when you look at that and I go, okay, on the short end, I'm a little, I'm a little less, uh, but the bot, but where it works is a CD is going to be, have a surrender period or, or it's going to be locked up for a period of time. So you're, you know, while you're a little illiquid on the whole life and it's, you know, it is what it is. The CD, you're a lot of liquid at the beginning because you just can't access it. You lock that money up for that guarantee. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Fair enough. Bonds you can buy certain ways where they're more liquid, but that's a that's a whole different animal, right? There are ways yeah. to do it, but let's face it, most people aren't sophisticated enough to go pull that off. Like yeah. they're they're just not. Most of the time, when you buy a bond, you're also locked up, and your money's locked up for a period of term. Whether it's a one year bond, a three year bond, a five year, a ten year, whatever, your money's locked into it. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. And so with whole life, you get the equivalent of CD and bond like returns, but with the liquidity of a savings account. Now, is there a cost to it? Sure. Like, and we'll go there. I'm not going to evade that question, but let's, but let's think about it. Even before that, if you believe that you want to emergency fund and you got $60,000 a year and your goal is like, Hey, I yep. want to get to, if let's <laughs> say your, your income is a hundred grand at the end of the 10 year period. And you go, cause let's face it. If you start year one and you're saving $500 a year, by the time you're 10 years in, you better be making more money than when you started. Right. Yep. And you're going to be yep. like, unless you're, <laughs> really incompetent right well, like the, and, and you actually bring up a good point there and maybe we can talk about this a little bit as well yeah. and like let's talk about okay so you mentioned you mentioned okay there's an individual that comes in at 500 dollars a month and i don't know if you've watched 
any videos on my channel. But basically, what I say is this this is a great strategy. It can be very applicable. However, I would say that it should be reserved for the high income earners that have the flexibility, they have income on hand, they have capital, and they've already taken advantage. You're already nodding your head. No, I like that. They've already taken advantage of other traditional vehicles that have less strings attached. And I know you're thinking, oh my God. But let's talk about that for a little bit. Because sure. listen, I, I know. Like, listen, you got a thousand videos on your channel. I, you, we've talked before, dude. You're, yeah. you're, I know you're a good guy. I know you're one of the good ones that are out Thank there. You. But I see a lot. Listen, I, I've dealt with a lot of clients and I've seen a lot of people with whole life insurance that are paying, like you said, $500 a month. And they come to me and they're like, hey, man, I'm paying $500 a month and I bought it three years ago. I have $0 cash surrender value. All we wanted was to protect our family for. Like, oh, we just wanted life insurance and we went to an advisor and said, hey, we want some life insurance to protect our family. And then they have this $500 whole life insurance policy that the advisor sold. And it's just a regular, yeah. it's not specially designed or anything like that. And so this is where a lot of my concerns for permanent life insurance arise. Because honestly, Chris, you are, you're one of the few. Yeah. You're honestly, you're one of the few. I, and I think you're a really good guy and I think you're structuring things very properly. But I think the majority of advisors are not doing it like you do it. And actually, that's one thing that I want to talk about before. I know you're like fighting at the, you're chomping at the bits ready to go is I don't know about in the States, but in Canada, the way that the commission is actually designed is we make less commission if we structure a policy properly, like you mentioned. Okay. 100%. So, so if we, if we do like what you said, where you have the flexibility to go $150 up to $500 and you, you break even in the early years, such as year three or year four, the, the advisor actually makes way less commission. Like 90% and, less. Yeah. And so, so as an advisor, we're incentivized to structure these policies wrong. Right. That's and true. so, more often yeah. than not, and, and maybe, you know, I might be a little bit jaded and biased in the industry, Chris, yeah. but, but you, that's, that's my experience. That's a lot of my experience with no. whole life. And, and I'm not picking on infinite banking or invest in life insurance at all. I'm, I'm picking on like, hey, no. I met with this client and they said like, yeah, man, I'm just trying to get some additional life insurance or look at other options because we're paying $500 or $800 and we paid it for three years and we have $0 in cash render value. And like, we just can't afford it anymore. Like, and we're, you know, and, and like, you know, we only have $250,000 death benefit and we wanted a million. And now the advisors quit. He's out of the industry. Like he's, he's not answering our phone anymore. Right. And so, you know, I, mm -hmm. and I probably am quite jaded now in, in the industry, but like, let's talk about that, man. Like what, are you running into that down in the States as well? Like, is that we something? run into it every up? day. That's why, yeah. that's why I have a thousand videos on my channel that are public. <laughs> and that's why I have another 500 behind the scenes that are for training because like, Yep. That the, right there is why I do what I do and sure. why I am on a mission to build an IMO with 5,000 agents so we can overwhelm all the stupidity out there and all the greed and all the, you know, yeah. like whole life insurance this is my belief. And this is why I do what I do is like True. whole life insurance can either be the most powerful foundational asset that you utilize if you structure it and leverage it in your life and build it yeah. as a foundational asset to perform multiple functions in your life, to be the emergency account, to be an opportunity fund, to be there to protect your family in case something tragic happens to you, to be there for living benefits when you're in retirement, to deal with long-term care and disability and all these things that yep. you know most people don't think about. And by the time <laughs> they do, it's too late and it's too expensive and they can't get it. And you know, you you think about it. If you started like to like where I started when you were 25 years old, you start saving at 500 bucks a month. And you're solving all these needs that you don't even think you're going to have yet. That you don't even like you're solving problems before you even realize that they're going to be a problem if you just implement a plan. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're thinking like, oh, I'm 25, I just need to invest and I just need money in a savings account. Like that's short term thinking. You're not mm -hmm. thinking about your long term problems. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's people are not thinking long enough term. Right. And so, but that said, people, agents are. <laughs> I mean, 90, they're bad. They're 95, yeah. maybe 98% of agents are idiots. I'm yeah. just going to say it. No. Like, and the, the maybe yeah. well intentioned, some of them more than others, but there's a massive lack of education. You know where the real problem comes in um, is the carriers. R okay. That's interesting. That's very and, interesting. And, and that it's because the carriers don't have any education about this stuff. No. Okay. None. Okay. Yeah. If you want to like if if you want to learn how to do it the right way, you need to go find somebody like me yep. that can teach you. You need to go find there's and I'm not the only one. I'm just using an example. Like 
it, it's there's such a lack of training on the carrier side because think about it if yep. the agent's making more money when they sell a full base policy and there's no cash value the company's making more money yep yep so and they're that, also incentivized to then mm -hmm. keep it that way why would they be incent why would they try and educate anyone on structuring it any other way well and it's a balance right <laughs> like different companies um uh, view it in different ways and that's why i'm a big believer like i work with companies um and well we work with all the companies but like the ones that we give the most the majority of our business to are the companies that are in alignment with the way that we want to do business and they yeah. they look at it and they say listen they 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 are the companies that do offer training on how to structure them the way that we're talking about they're the ones that will have special support lines for policy loans and policy loan management and mm -hmm. like really focus on that kind of service component of it because it's it's a different animal right yep, like yep. like it, you got to get yep. used to it yep. you got to work with an agent who's done this that knows how to not only design the policies but that is with an agency that's going to back you up and be able to support you if you decide you want to take the policy loans that way they can help you navigate it it's not very complicated once you do it two or three times yeah but for the first two or three times you're going to want somebody to hold your hand through it Yep. right like, yeah oh yeah like that's just yep. what it is and and the problem is people go online and they see a concept maybe they read nelson nash's book and then they just go down to their local uh, <laughs> canadian mutual agent or northwestern mutual agent and they yep. say hey i read this book i want to get a policy like this and the guy goes oh i could do that and he sells them a full base policy and yep. the the client is neither here nor there they're unaware they're not educated themselves and therefore, you know, then they get involved and they start putting like a thousand dollars a month into a into a full base policy that isn't going to have any cash value for four or five years. And and even then, it's going to be starting to be very marginal, and it's probably going to be a break even in year twenty two kind of policy, right? Yep. Like, and that's just yep. like nobody wants that. <laughs> like nobody wants that. And yeah, it's like except for the agent that's scamming you to make the big commission. That's the person that wants it. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's actually um okay, let's let's talk about this one thing first and then we'll go back and, and talk about something else. Okay. Um because you brought up a really good point. I mean, I mean, one, yeah, it's good to work with a carrier that understands what's happening, but two, it's good to also work with an agency that also understands what's happening. One of the biggest problems I think in our industry is the just excessive amount of MLMs that we have in this space. And the problem ah. with MLMs is you'll have a newly a uh, licensed advisor come in and sell an incredibly complex product to a new customer that requires management. And yep. then within one to two years, that advisor is out of the industry. And I remember right. probably seven years ago, six years ago, maybe, and I got a client and she's a very nice lady. She was a wealthy business owner. And I did a lot of work with business owners in my previous uh, financial planning firm for business owners. Right. And one of the things she said to me that, that she picked me out of the other advisors, she said, Philip, I picked you because you're young and you're going to be alive by the time I die. And so you're going to be able to take care of all this for me because I'll be dead and you're young and you're going to, I didn't want some old crusty guy yes. in his sixties or his seventies. I wanted someone who's going to yes. be there to take care of these problems when they arise. You know, you, you tell me awesome. about all these different things that we're going to do, but however, this is like 20, 30 or 40 years away when we're actually going to do it. So yeah. I want to know that you're going to be there when it's time to do it. And so, you know, you talk about working with an agency like yours, like Life 180, which, I mean, I don't know how long you guys have been around, but obviously for a long time. No, we haven't. The, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you've been in the industry for I've a long been, time. I've been around a while. I started you've Life been. 180, the IMO, as an agency. Okay. January 1st, 2022. Okay, okay. But you personally have been in the I've industry for a long time. I just kind of hit the point where based on demand, based on people being like, yeah. I need yeah. help. I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. Let's go. Yeah. So I built yeah. the agency. <laughs> Yeah. And, and I think that's like something incredibly important is like we talk about these strategies, but like yeah. you mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's like, we're not robots. You can, sh I can show you and you can show me on an Excel spreadsheet how something looks and it'll be, you do this for 30 years and this is exactly what you're going to get. But life isn't that way. We're not, we're not robots. It's not going to happen that way. Life right. is going to change. Things are going to happen. And so I, I think another big problem that I have with not just infinite banking, but any of these really complex strategies that advisors are trying to position with clients is like, how long have you been in the industry? Like, what right. are you, are you in it? Like, are you now sustainable? Are you five plus years or 10 plus years? And you can oh. take on clients and like, you will for sure be there when they need you. Or do you have some type of systems in place or something to manage like some redundancy plan if you're gone? And I think that's another big problem is like, 
you'll have advisors that sell a product and then that's should, it they're gone we put together they're, a video of they're like nowhere. the biggest problems in the in the industry because like there's like <laughs> we could probably talk about it for 10 hours it's um you know these imos the problem with the imos is that um like World Finance, I'm going to call them out if you don't mind. World Financial Group, PHP, PFA. There's all these companies in the U.S. that do it. Yeah. I know World Financial Group is really big in Canada as yep. well. Yeah. The yep. biggest, the biggest problem with them is that they're what's called what I call. I don't know if this is a technical term, but I, I've kind of like come up with this. Is it's an internal consumption model. Sure. Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. So it's a recruit first model. Yep. You join. Before you learn anything about the product, before you learn anything about what you're selling and build your personal self-confidence, you are um, encouraged to go out and recruit people and sell people in your network. And just trust me, right? If I'm your upline or manager, just trust me. You'll learn on the fly. Don't ask questions. Just follow my lead and you'll make money. Yeah. That's the yeah. mindset. And by the way, while you're doing this, go recruit three other people to do the same thing. So now you got the blind leading the blind and nobody knows what's going on. It creates a massive moral hazard in the industry. It's going to give a black eye. I think there's going to be massive regulatory problems because of this that are going to impact negatively the people that are doing it right, you know, like me. Yep. And when people go, Chris, why do you make so much anti-content on World Financial Group? Why do you make so much content against PHP? Oh, Chris, you must be jealous because because like they're killing it you know and you wish you were no. that I'm like no i I'm, no. I'm actually making this because they're a bunch of dirt bags and like, they're bringing and, our entire industry down as a and, whole and the problem is what happens is and i see this all the time i'll tell you what last week alone we were we had eight people join our company from war financial group php and pfa combined nice, nice eight people alone because what happens is in that <laughs> model you go in and if you're a money hungry like greedy yep. person that's just yep. gonna with no morals client, and no ethics i call it they're gonna make money off the tears of their clients that's totally. what they do yep. right yep. and 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 if you're that way you're the one who's gonna stick in that environment and you're gonna bring other people in but what happens is the people that have ethics right and have like a good moral compass they're gonna yeah. get there and they're gonna see it and they're gonna be like something's not right here yeah right yeah and then they're gonna start searching and then they're going to find me because <laughs> if you search for World financial group php or pfa on youtube you're going to find me i promise and I, I love that so much. like and but i it's not by accident yeah because i'm doing this not because i'm trying to recruit those people because by the way i made all those videos about those companies before i could even recruit them it was before i even had an imo yep i couldn't recruit them i had no way to help them i was just trying to create information yep. Yep. to serve them and like so they could understand from an industry veteran like what they were involved with so they yeah. could learn how to ask better questions yep to understand what they were doing right yep. that was the purpose and now that i've got it going on like the way that i do you know we're 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 rescuing them so to speak right like we're we're helping them the people that say wow i got into this for because i wanted to serve people because i wanted to learn about this stuff myself and i wanted to help people you know like, so I basically took what I believe is like the best components of all that. And I said, listen, we're like, you can come work with us and we'll teach you. But if you're, if you're going to come here, you better be realizing you're, you're not going to go sell cases on your own. You're going to go through an actual training process. You're going to get a certification process that you're going to have to go through an 11 week course before you're allowed to meet with anybody alone. Like, yeah, you better be willing to go slow to go fast you yep. better be willing to invest in yourself before you think anybody else is going to invest in you mm -hmm. and if you're not willing to do that don't do this like this industry is not for you yeah you know? yeah we we man i could i could sit here and talk anti mlm content for literally ever i have i yeah i haven't it's funny that you talk about that i mean i my channel started and it was very you know rudimentary at the beginning it's very just informational like what's the sure. difference between term life insurance and permanent life insurance right and then you know there's so many you can only make a video so many different ways until you start to saturate how many different ways can you say term versus permanent permanent oh, versus term permanent oh, versus term versus permanent <laughs> right so naturally it starts to expand sure. and you know I, I always knew that there was this like 
you know, chomping thing there. There's, you know, World Financial Group, Primerica, Xperia Financial. We have those here. And a lot of questions are, are in the comments. Is this good insurance? Is this a good company? And I've, you know, kind of just like went by the wayside. But recently, probably in the last month or two, I've done a full on assault. And so I did, you know, a Primerica review video. I did a, a World Financial Group, Grayway Financial. Um, and then in Canada, we just had the Federal Regulatory Service of Ontario, which is basically the Ontario license in the regulatory body that, that governs okay. insurance. Yeah. They did a massive thematic survey and audit, basically an investigation of those three MLMs, Great Way, World Financial Group, and Experior Financial. And the findings are like poorly trained advisors, recruitment model, poorly trained this, no oversight, no training. So what's do, the do, 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 do. Um, that's, yeah, the consequence, you know, they're, they're basically, you know, they got a slap on the wrist right now. They're, they're doing retraining. They're having to redo their documents or having to redo a lot of their education. Um, and okay, honestly, yeah. it's, it's to be determined actually. So it's still an active okay. thing right. that they're working through. However, cool. it's like, I mean, you search, uh, you know, world financial group under investigation and they're boom, the first one, the problem is, is like, of course, each different province in Canada has a different license and body. So it's only one province that yeah. did it, but yeah. Still, at the end of the day, I mean, it's it's happening, right? So I mean, people that's are in, starting that's to become a little bit more aware of, like, of it. Yeah, that's indicative of the culture and the under the like inside the belly of the beast, so to speak, of like what's happening, yeah. right? Like, and yeah. what their culture is all about. And you know, anytime you have a, a financial organization where the people are supposed to go out and you know get people to entrust them with their financial futures with advice, and and the focus is hype and recruiting and you know not if it's anything but excellence as far as your level of understanding about the products and yeah. um you know financial just systems and structures and like different types of accounts and products and like mastery of like understanding how they all weave together to form like what i would consider like a plan you know yeah. like if you don't if that's not it like then it's bad, you know. Well, they're not. They're not planning. They're selling products. Right. Exactly. That's, that's it. Right. And, right. and I mean, there's. It's and, just a lead gen. That is their lead right. gen. Right. And New from recruit is their lead gen. And from that perspective, here's what I'll say. Like, I don't necessarily have like a huge problem with that, all the way, because like, <clears throat> I there's planning has different meanings, right? Like, sure. Financial sure. planning from a traditional like financial planner perspective is like asset allocation diversification different types of roth ira ira 401k rsp like you know yeah. different like different segments and different uh types of funds and etfs and stocks and you know gold and you know, like the traditional stuff i i'm gonna tell you right now i have i don't have i have zero dollars in any of that let's 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 dive back into that because i mentioned that right. earlier on in the video and i saw your eyes light up and you wanted to like let's talk about so in, in i know it's different in the states but in canada That's here not. we have some we have some standard ones we have the rrsp which is yeah. you put a dollar in you get a tax a corresponding That's tax your 401k deduction. version okay, the RRSP okay. Is the 401k. Sure. and then everything's tax deferred and then when you take it out it's tax or whatever your effective tax rate is yep we have uh tfsa which is basically um, you put money in, there's no tax deduction. However, anything that you earn within it is tax free. Um, and that's, that's, and that's Roth IRA. okay. Roth IRA. And then, you know, yep. we have some, some different group RRSPs, you know, so you mm -hmm. you might have an employee, um, you know, sponsored pension plan. It has the same characteristics of an RRSP. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we I have said that, that. Here. okay. And, and you're not, you don't believe in those in the slightest. Um, okay. <laughs> so, so no, so okay you're gonna find with me phil like i don't have absolutes okay good good okay. good because only the sith deal in absolutes and if you haven't yeah. seen that so, you had a terrible childhood <laughs> you know so i i don't believe in absolutes i believe in aligning your money with your values and your beliefs yeah right so i believe for a person like me that they're the worst thing in the world okay um i believe if you are uh an employee a W-2 employee in the US, what's like a, a regular employee classified? A T4? T1. T1. Uh, God, now I'm on the spot. T4 or T1, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's one of those two, right? It's like, like whatever. In the US, it's W-2 employee. But if you work it's for- T4. No, it's T4. It's T4. It's T4. It's T4. Okay. It's T4. Yeah. If you work in the, in, in, in the US, it's W-2. I think Canada's T4. And like, but if you work for a company and you have employee benefits and you have, 
you know, the government, like, like social security benefits paid by the employer in the U S and like, whatever that is in Canada, like if all that is happening and you're just a, like a work for a company, you don't have an entrepreneurial spirit. You don't have the desire to be a real estate investor. You don't want to think outside the box. You just want to plug along and you want to save and invest. I still think there are things that you need to do to save on top. Like we were talking about saving before investing. Yeah. But, but yeah. like, let's say you're doing both, right? Like let's just sure. say you're really doing it the right way. Yeah. Then yeah. I mean, like if you're a, just a work for the man kind of person, which let's face it, we need that. I don't, I don't mean that. I know that comes off as like sounding critical, but like, yeah. The world needs that, right? For like sure. I need people that want to work for me, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise I can't do what I want to do, right? Like I can't be myself and build what I'm building. I need employees and and so do other entrepreneurs. Like not everybody has my risk tolerance. Not everybody has my skill set and my abilities and I honor that. And so, and, and like some people need more stability to be effective, right? Some people need to know they're going to have a paycheck. And if that's you and you want to work for somebody forever and you like then, yeah. I, I would rather hang myself personally, like, but I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Sure. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. If yeah. that's you, no judgment at all. I get it because mm -hmm. I have friends that are that way. Yeah. You know, and and for them, like, I just it works. It works. It works. Bro. Yeah. I tell them, don't listen to me. Don't watch my channel. Don't listen, like, because my advice is gonna hurt you. Yeah. Like, because you don't have what it takes to pull it off, quite frankly, right? Yeah. Which, which is, which shouldn't just be glossed over. It's, it's not like a set it and forget it thing. Like, this is something you need to be rather diligent with. Like, this no. is, this is, no, you don't need to be diligent. No, no, I, I, oh. no, you're oh. right. You're yeah. right. Like, I would say this if, if there's a couple components to this, first of all, if you're going to go that route, and you're just going to save and you're going to put money in your RRSP or 401k, right? Yeah. You're going to do that. You better put more away than you think you have to, first of all, because it, it, you're going to need more. You're just going to need more. Yeah. Like a lot of financial planners assume, you know, like most people, the problem that I find is, is like pick a 35 year old, right? And they say, okay, I got to save. I'm making a hundred grand a year. You know, I'm like flying high and I'm doing well and whatever, which, you know, that's another conversation, but like, if like they're planning on that, they're going, well, I need to save money. In my RRSP, I'll speak to your Canadians for a second. Like, and they go, <laughs> this is how much money I need to save to be comfortable. I got news for you 30 years from now, you're going to need a hell of a lot more than you think. Yeah. Because of inflation. Yeah. Inflation's a real thing. Take the number you think you're going to need and two and a half exit based on your current income today. And that's not to be living high off the hog. That's, like you take a hundred thousand dollar a year income, you and right now, and you say, okay, what do I need to be able to get a hundred thousand dollars a year using the four percent rule? That's two and a half million dollars, right? For the four percent rule at that. Now I understand there are other state benefits and whatever that may cut into the need for that, but just apples to apples. Sure, here. sure. Yep. Yep. But you need two and a half million, right? And so if you think that you're you like, I'm just shooting for that two and a half million, well, I got news for me. Two, 30 years from now, when you go to retire following that system, you're going to need $250,000 a year just to maintain your standard of living after inflation. Yeah. That means you're going to need like seven and a half to $8 million. And I, I don't know anybody alive that believes with any level of certainty that making a hundred grand a year, saving 10 to 15% of their income, they're going to get to $8 million in their RRSP. Yeah. It's not going to happen. That is the problem with the financial system as it exists, in my opinion. Is inflation is it, or is is the uh, decreased amount that people think they have it? At the lack of understanding of it mm. all, okay. right? And and if they really knew, and I, I believe <laughs> this, and so I'm really big into like the power of the subconscious mind. Sure. If you haven't read this book, there's a book called The Ant and the Elephant. Okay. It's amazing. And, and it's all about it's all about the power of the subconscious mind. So like when we make conscious thought and we just try to like grit our way through things, we're like, okay, I know I need to save money, right? And I know I need to put this money away and plan for retirement and whatever. And we do it. Yeah. That's when that's a conscious thought, right? Yep. That fires off about 4 million neurons in our brains. Every time we make a conscious thought, that's what's happening. Our subconscious mind actually went like the things that are really deep seated in our programming, the things that we don't even know, we know, right? The, 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 the subconscious stuff, 4 billion neurons. Okay. 
It's the equivalent of an ant sitting on the head of an elephant thinking it's going to steer the elephant. In what way to go. Okay? <laughs> elephant doesn't even know he's there, right? Okay. It's a pretty cool analogy. Yeah. Like it. It's a great book. <laughs> you had that book. one before. You had that one locked and loaded ready. <laughs> you got you got to you got to you got to you got to read that book. But like that's the idea and the problem is I'm a big believer that the human brain and your subconscious is only going to allow you to put 100% of effort into something that you believe with 100% certainty you'll be successful with. Yeah. And I think the reason that people in America in the world but specifically North America are struggling so bad is because we be we don't believe we have the chance to be successful mm. because we look at the world around us and we go and, and the problem is they can't explain why mm -hmm. they don't know why but their intuition their subconscious goes something just doesn't make sense and what happens a confused mind always says no mm -hmm. right yep and so if you're confused about money if you're if there's ambiguity in your financial plan and whatever you're trying to accomplish if any of that exists, a confused mind always says no. The human brain will not allow you to put 100% of effort into your own success unless you believe with that certainty that you will be successful. So what do you do? You say, well, screw it. I'm just going to try to live for today. I don't know what the future holds, so I'm just going to I'm going to live while I can live, and I'm going to enjoy it. And whatever happens in the future, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'll do the yeah. best I can. It'll, be, yeah. it'll, it'll all work itself out. Yeah. So, so that's, that's a good point that you bring up. You, I mean, you talk about, you know, a lot about rewiring your brain and education and, and the ant and the elephant. I think like we talked a little bit about that before, but I mean, I think that is spot on, especially for any type of life insurance, whole life insurance, invest in life insurance strategy. Sure. Like we talked about it before. I, I think you, you're right. You, if you're confused minds will do nothing. Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think, this is something and we might disagree on exactly who it's for but sure. we both agree on the fact that if you're not fully committed and into this and disciplined and adhered to it then i mean it, i don't think it's for you i think you need to be you have to be involved in it this can't be a set it or forget it thing okay yes and i'm gonna push back with you sure um so shouldn't that be with everything like so so think about it this way. so so <laughs> No, not at all. I mean, I pay my cell phone bill every month and I don't even look at it, you know, and maybe that's to my detriment because we had a well, yeah, $80 okay, conversation. Yeah, but I would argue <laughs> that's the way you are. If you were super tight with money. Um, I guess it depends where your priorities are. That's right. another thing too, right? Like some totally. people, some people really want to have a grasp on their finances and <laughs> look at them and manage them and see where they're going and what's totally. happening here and there. Other people just, they don't care. They're, Hey, listen, I'm, I'm living life. I make a hundred grand. I'm happy. I spend a hundred grand or 90 grand or whatever it is. We'll yep. figure it out later. I'm, I'm enjoying life. I take three trips a year. You know, I, I go out to nice restaurants, right? I don't want to think about it that much. We'll think about it later. Right. Okay. Like, I mean, maybe that's a bad example, but like a lot of people, I think just want to do, have a set it and forget it mentality with their finances. Like, and then I think that's a big reason why people hire you know, financial planners or whatever they want to call themselves. is just like, here, you manage it. Here, my investment manager, he does all of it, right? And I don't know what you guys have down there, but like portfolio managers we have I, down here. It's like, here you go. Here's my money. You deal I, with it. I don't I want agree to with you, it. But I would, I would argue that those guys are just glorified salespeople the way that, that life insurance agents are glorified salespeople. Well, touche, but we also are glorified salespeople. I, I don't dispute that. We Everybody is. And because there's, there's commissions associated with virtually every financial product in the world. Sure. So yep. like yep. the, the, the insurance agents that like to sling it that way. And then the investment advisor that likes to sling like life insurance, that they're all the same. I'm sorry, but they're all the good. Same. Good. Like good. That, well, we that agree on a, that. We agree on that. hundred percent. We're so, all just salesmen. So, Let's not pretend here's, here's, like we're anything better than that. Right. Do you, so my company's name is life 180. Do you know where life 180 came from? I, I imagine it's going to do something about like, turning your life around. You did a 180 in life. You were going in the wrong direction and you started going the right direction. So, so the life 180 is an acronym it's living intentionally for excellence okay and what's 180 turning 95 percent of people in the world are unhappy with the results in their life sure. and and my belief is you are where you are in life because of who you are in life is that okay. fair enough yep yep period the actions that you've taken have gotten you to where you are and they will yep. continue and that's to why i'm on the back of every are. shirt that i have on a lot of my marketing i i, I have a little delta sign the triangle which is a symbol for change yeah and i say change your thinkings change your actions change your life because at the end of the day 
If you have a life that you're either living or that you want to live, your life as you're living it now is directly impacted by the actions that you've taken to get to this point in time. And the actions that you've taken have been directly correlated to the thinking that you have because yep. Yep. it all starts with our thinking. So how do you change your thinking? You change the inputs, you change the people you surround yourself with, you change the information you're stop reading, uh, stop watching Netflix, stop watching Fox, stop watching CNN, yep. start reading books, <laughs> start watching Pot or listening to podcasts that are going to help develop skills that start, you know, in all the all the things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and invest in yourself. And I would argue the biggest problem. And I know not everybody's once again. And this is I'm I'm a big old caveat to this. And I'm going to make a bold statement. Sure. This isn't for everybody. Okay. Yeah. But I would argue if you want to accomplish anything significant in life following the RRSP, 401k, go to school, get a job, put your money there. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know? If you wanna do anything significant in life, yeah, like, that is not the plan for you. I have no, the reason I'm so bold in my statements, I have no interest in working with those people. Like, and I'm not trying to be offensive, you know what I mean? Like. I want to help the movers and the shakers, the people that want to make a dent in the universe, the people that want to accomplish something significant. I want to help them actualize mm -hmm. that. And the mm -hmm. bottom line is, if you're not there yet, it's because of who you are. Mm -hmm. It's because of what you've done to get to this point in time. What got you here isn't going to get you where you want to go. You need to think outside of the box. You need to implement different strategies. And, and your risk profile is completely different. You, like, you, I, I look at it this. I call it the four Fs of life, faith, family, uh, fitness and finances. Okay. Like I don't care. I, and it's not a religious thing, but your faith, I'm, I'm a believer in a higher power. And, and I don't care if you're Muslim, Christian, metaphysical, whatever, right? Like it doesn't matter, but like whatever your faith, you're, you're not going to be able to outsource your success in your faith, whatever that is to you. Is that fair enough? Yep. You got to take radical accountability for <laughs> how you grow in that area. Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Your family. If you're going to be a father, a husband, or whatever, can I outsource my best friend to be the husband for my wife? No. Or be a parent to my kids? No. I have I have to grow. The results are going to be what they're. I can't outsource my success as a father, as a husband, right? yep. as a brother, yep. as a son, as a you know a friend. I got to be that, mm -hmm. and I got to grow and become more if I want to elevate my life. Fair enough. Yep. My fitness. My health. I yep. call it fitness because I wanted an F. I like acronyms. Yeah, but like, yeah. but that's I, on you. Yeah. I got, I got to eat healthy, right? <clears throat> I can't have you eat healthy for me. I got to do it myself. I got to be intentional about what I'm putting in my body to fuel my body. I got to work out. My trainer's not going to do my push-ups and do my reps. I got to do it. I can't outsource my success in that area. Those are the three most important things, and I would argue finance is the foundation of it all because. And it's the one thing that can have an impact on the others because it helps you mm -hmm. show up more powerfully. So yep. if you figure out your money, you can figure out those things. But the problem is people don't want to figure out their money. They want to just give it to an investment advisor and say, yeah, I got a guy that does that. No, the reason you're broke, the reason you're in debt, the reason you have all these problems is because you don't want to take accountability for one of the most important things in your life. You want to figure the other things out? Figure this out. Until you're willing to take accountability for that, you're never going to be successful in the other areas. Yeah. And that's a yeah. bold statement, but like, there's a reason. That's why I'm so anti traditional crap because the, the traditional mindset of go to school, get a job, put money in this qualified account, that's all about control. You giving up control, the results in your life. As soon as you do that, you lose because you scapegoat the financial advisor. Oh, I lost all this money. Well, why do you lose it? I don't know. My advisor lost it. That's ignorance. <laughs> well, you know what? I think if, if uh, Life 180 doesn't take off, you have a great career in motivational speaking. <laughs> <laughs> No, I listen, but before we wrap this up, because I feel like we could talk about this for hours and hours and we hours. Could. And I love and I love talking uh, with we'll you. Do it again. I, I, I agree. I agree largely with what you're saying. You do need to take accountability for a lot of the actions that you have in your life. And I like your four F's. What is it? Family, faith, 
finance and fitness. Yep. I don't know if I 100% agree with the fact that traditional investments would imply that they're still not taking control of their own financial health because I do still believe that a lot of those tools can be effectively used to still achieve their financial goals and their financial picture. However, I okay. do agree that they still, regardless of which route they pick, TFSA, mm -hmm. RSP, 401k, whole life insurance, portfolio manager, Bob the builder, who, whatever it is, that they should absolutely have a more active approach if they want that to be a serious part wow. of their life. And it is a serious part of their life. It does affect every well, other facet of your life. And so whatever route you go, I do think that you should be more heavily involved and you shouldn't just blindly trust your investment manager. You should dig in. You should learn what he's doing. You should learn other systems. Yeah. You should learn other strategies and you should absolutely take control of it. However, I still do think that those other vehicles, and I know you're chomping at the bits ready to get after me, can still be effectively utilized to achieve whatever financial goals you have. Sure. If you have a long enough time frame. To me, it's just it's a broken model that's designed to keep you working in the system for too long. Um, sure. Then you need to. The idea of go to school, get a job, work at a career for 35 years, and to, sure. to maybe be able to retire yep. is like pathetic. It's <laughs> like pathetic. It's it it is it is and i don't want to go too much longer here because probably already have an hour but i mean that absolutely i mean i agree with you i mean I, i'm a business owner just like you right i don't want to right i don't want to work and I, i've seen a lot of people that have worked till 60 right. with an rsp and a tfsa and everything and they died at 61 when they retired and so right? the last so thing i want to say that. yeah so the last thing i want to say and i, I should have gotten to this earlier but the thing that drives me mm -hmm. is that I believe everybody should be investing in cash flow assets, whatever that looks like, okay. right? Cash flow producing assets, one of the reasons I love real estate so much. One yep. of the reasons yep. I, you know, do Turo car rentals and 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 renting out my trailer for my camper trailer and all that stuff because they're yep. they're businesses. They create cash flow and like yep. whatever. And 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 the reason it goes back to the ant and the elephant, the subconscious mind. If you're investing, let, let's say you're making ten grand a month, right? And you need to invest and you go, if, if, if you know technically on paper and you really do a real financial plan that takes inflation into consideration, you go, whoa, I'm making 120 grand a year. I need to get to $7 million. Your subconscious mind goes, no. But if we create a cash flow investment strategy for you where you save first, but then start developing cash flow. Yeah. And I say, you need to get to $10,000 a month of cash flow replacement. Your subconscious mind can wrap your head around that because you know what ten thousand dollars feels like. Yep, you believe you can be successful, so you'll actually implement the plan. That's yep. why I love doing what we do. For sure, for sure. Listen, man, I I loved having this conversation, and I appreciate you so sure. much. Even if we disagree on some things, I really yeah, appreciate no, the awesome. conversation. Uh, one thing that I would love to do with you is another video on something that I think we both agree on which is universal life insurance. Oh and, yeah, let's go there. And I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited to hear, cause I know you have some pretty strong opinions about that as well. And I just uh, recorded and edited a video, it should be out in the next month or so, on right. basically when would you ever use universal life insurance over whole life insurance? And I'm very curious to hear your thoughts on it. I remember earlier you said only the Sith deal. No, I said only the Sith deal in absolute. So I'm curious if that also applies to universal life insurance, but let's save it for another ah, video. Okay. <laughs> All right, you got it. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much for Chris. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. You got it. It's been fun, man. Awesome. Take care, dude.